So hello everyone. Uh, yeah, I don't see a speaker. Oh, hello, Brandon. Yeah. This is as loud as it can get. Um, can you guys hear him at all? Say something. Testing, testing, testing. Okay. So they probably can't hear you. Um because my phone isn't very loud. So I apologize about that. We're having a lot of technical difficulties as you guys can see. Um, I don't know what we'll do in regards to your participation today. Um, this is a struggle live stream. This is a struggle live stream, yes, indeed. Um, okay. So you guys probably missed most of the things that we said earlier, um, the discussion that we had, and I don't really remember myself either. Good Lord, it's very hot right now where I'm sitting in this room. Um, I don't know, what do you think, Brandon? How should we go about doing this? Uh, just ask everybody to like put the same comments that they did before and we'll I'll go in the comments and kind of and respond to them like in your chat. All right. So, um, for those of you who had questions in the previous live stream, uh, please leave them here, and we can start uh, addressing those as it goes along. So, uh, again, I do apologize for the technical difficulties. Oh, someone said they can hear you. Oh. oh, okay. Okay, let me maybe do it this way. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, sorry, guys. I, I ethically failed tonight. I'm not normally like the technical guy who's supposed to be like in charge of all this shit, and I just like way fucked up. Like, all my equipment just did not work tonight. There's like some weird like vortex, like. Twilight Zone shit going on in my room where uh, for some reason there's a buzzing sound that I can't identify the source of. So uh, until I figure that out, yeah, Jill's gonna be the one in charge of that from now on. What? It feels well, like. Or at least until I figure out how to fix it, which is indeterminate. <laughs> it feels like a lot of responsibility. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. I I have, um, I, this is not only a struggle, live streams is a struggle computer. I, I don't have like the fancy webcam and uh, microphone and whatnot with me, but uh, at least, at least you can, you can hear. So, oh, got an angry emoji there. All right. Well, anyway, um, tonight's episode was, I, I thought it was very good. I thought it was a very strong uh, episode. Hello, Veronica. And, um, you know, I'm wondering who else we're going to lose by the time we get to the finale. Obviously, we're going to lose the beer guy, although, frankly, he was kind of getting on my nerves anyway. Yeah, he's a whiny little bitch. Yeah, he definitely, definitely is a whiny little bitch. Um, oh, I got beard. I feel like that that walker that he came across that bit him could have been a very easy takedown if he had ever taken down one before in his life and wasn't such a punk about things. And, um, uh-huh. and I know he's blaming Morgan, but, you know, Morgan saved him the first time. He was running around with the hood on his head. So I don't really think that Morgan is, you know, to blame in this instance. It's not his fault that that lady is insane, that Martha is out of her mind. So, yeah, and and also, um, I mean, like, fuck that guy anyway, because the opportunity to save Morgan when he was like up on top of the car, surrounded by walkers, and he didn't do shit. He didn't yeah. even like toss him the pocket knife. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for that guy. Although I will say this, I thought it was like really interesting that even though he's been a whiny bitch the entire time that we've known him as a character, mm-hmm. he actually accepted the fact that he got bit like surprisingly well 
like he basically accepted it right off the bat. He didn't like, you know, do what a lot of people do, which is like, you know, try and bargain and like, what can you do for me? And like, take somebody hostage or some stupid crap like that. He, he just basically was like, oh, I'm going to get that. And was like, okay with it, which I thought was surprising. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. If that was me and I was bitten and we're in a freaking hospital, I'd be like, okay, I want all the antibiotics. Like, let's just, let's just yeah. give it a, Let's just give it a shot. I just just give me all of them. Give me all the penicillins. Just just pump me up. And let's see how long we can make this stretch this out, you know? And maybe it's like, oh my up, but I'm not dead yet, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, especially since they're in a hospital, it's like you would assume that antibiotics would basically be everywhere. So there's no real harm in doing it that way. Um, so whatever. <laughs> You know, um, yeah, there, there's definitely no harm. And I'm curious as to how they're going to actually get down or whatever at this point, especially uh, with Wendell. Uh, I mean, he's got a new wheelchair, which is great, but that's still going to do jack squat, trying to get down the, beside, down the side of a building that has no stairs and no ladder. Um so that's going to be interesting to see what they do in these next two episodes. And then Alicia and Charlie, who I've been finding a little bit less annoying these days. Um, there's something about her face that just reminds me of Chandler. I don't know what it is. And uh, I'm, Charlie is starting to grow on me, which is weird. I know. You, you think she's like the Carl of the show? Is that what you're saying? I think they're going to try and make her into the Carl of the show. Um, I think she's less annoying than Enid. Uh, so yeah. so there's that. She's got that going. Yeah. <laughs> and um, let's see. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, I also, I mean, I'm assuming, so, like, at the end there, when Alicia, like, looks across the the river or whatever and she just starts smiling and she sees john and strand across the river right that's gotta be what that is yeah because they're on that 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 island thing right and, and charlie picked up john's hat uh yeah i mean yeah, I'm, I'm i'm blessed in one of the scenes for next week they showed charlie in the in the car or something with window so obviously the the band gets back together again next next week um also two interesting things to note uh candace i agree that jim should totally take the time to write down some of his beer recipes not that they have the supplies anymore and karen said maybe the helicopter will save them um clearly something saves them because windows no longer on the roof the next time we see a clip of him but uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say how, which way this is going to go. Yeah, you know, I, I noticed something. Um, and, like, I don't know. Maybe this is, like, just a huge stretch. But uh, there was a scene in tonight's episode where, because, like, they're in Austin, Texas, right? Yeah. There's a tower in the background that looks extremely similar to the Washington, D.C. tower that's in The Walking Dead like, art. And, cool. and I, I thought it was, like, strange that they, like, had that in the background so prominently during tonight's episode. Well, actually, it almost makes me wonder if, like, that means something on some level. Well, actually, one, now, now I'm not so sure that they are in Texas at this point. Uh, I don't want to say that definitively because I'm unsure. But two, uh, going back to all the callbacks to season one of The Walking Dead, uh, Amanda just said that, so Lou Diamond Phillips, who's on Talking Dead tonight, actually directed the episode, and he made the scene familiar to the first episode with Rick on purpose. Well, technically not yeah. the first episode, this, well, more more a second than, than first, I would think. Since the first episode was mostly him and Morgan in that house yeah. after a point. Yeah, Se season one callbacks. For sure. And then Jenna Elfman running around looking like Melissa McBride. Another callback, but not on purpose. 
Yeah, she her her voice sounds like her. I don't know if she's doing that on purpose or not. No, that's but, just I mean, that's just how she sounds, and she kind of looks. She looks like the, the 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 taller, younger version. Honestly, I've never seen her in anything else. I don't think, and so it's just like uncanny to me, bizarre when I see her acting on screen in the show. I'm just like, my God, she if I if I close my eyes. I don't know if I could, like, actually separate the two of them. They were, like, acting in the same scene. Like, they sound so similar. It's insane. You know, they ended up, like, like, if we found out down the road that they were sisters or something, I'd be like, yeah, okay. Totally not smart. If there was any siblings from the two shows, that would make more sense to me. I mean, I know a lot of people have been waiting for some kind of connection to Rick. But I think that connecting those two characters, especially since they both lost their daughters, it's so messed up. Uh, but because of the striking similarities, that would be totally cool with me. Hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. And, um, you know, as for making it back to to Rick and Virginia, I don't know. I don't know how this season's going to end. It's only two episodes left, right? Uh, I think two episodes left. Well, I, I... I really hope they do. I just, I don't see how it's going to make any sense whatsoever if they don't. I mean, if, if Morgan does not see Rick by the end of this season, I mean, unless they filmed footage for, like, a, you know, future use in, like, another season later on, that basically means that they're not going to ever meet again before Rick leaves the show. That's just so dissatisfying well, to everybody who's been watching The Walking Dead since day one. Well, we, we don't know what they will do in, in terms of the very first episode of season nine. We don't know that they officially start with the time jump. Entirely possible that they don't. I mean, who knows? Um, someone actually suggested on one of our, on uh, the latest YouTube video, uh, which is not on Facebook, by the way. Um, someone, uh, Lonnie, Lonnie Love mentioned, uh, Rashawn fan, you guys probably know her. She mentioned that it's entirely possible that when AMC did the, uh, what, didn't they do the premiere at AMC theaters, right? For last year? She, she, she hypothesized that that was a test run and that the finale will be in theaters as well, um, as opposed to te- like they're going to do it with like a movie or something, and that Rick will return, ah. which would be cool. Um, I, I kind of I'm even though I'm glad that we went to the premiere. There was, there seemed to be a nice experience to going to the movies and seeing the show, especially with all the footage that we were actually in. Because <laughs> I'm sorry I missed that. Yeah, which we didn't find out about until like people told us about it because we weren't there in the theaters. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see, we'll, we'll see, you know, what they do and how it goes. There's never a different avenues that they could possibly take. Uh, and, I, and I'm open to many of them. So time will tell. Yeah. This is a weird time. In, like the whole walking dead universe. I mean, the, the last six months, in this fandom have been so chaotic. I mean, not just, not just in terms of like things that have happened between the two shows. All within six months, we've had a major character go from The Walking Dead to Fear the Walking Dead in order to lead that show. We've had uh, like weird rumors that turned out to be true about Rick, the main character of The Walking Dead, leaving the show. And then, fucking Chris Hardwick has like a sexual harassment thing like allegations about him. I mean there's just like so much weird stuff that's happened in this fandom. It, it, it's very uh, like uneasy and uh, unpredictable like it seems like with everything in this fandom right now. So it's, it, I'm basically down to believe anything at this point just because I never would have thought a year ago if people came to me with like Rick's going to leave next year open, like, what are you smoking? You're huh. totally high. And it turned out to be true. If that shit's true, I, f- I don't know what else is going to be true. I mean, I, again, as, as long as Rick is in Dead Dead, someone 
So uh, well, we will address those questions later. By the way, there's a pinned post to the top of the page. Um, ask us any questions that you want. And when I return back to the West Coast, we will uh, answer those questions together. Uh, so I know things have been a little bit helter skelter when I'm when I'm back in Chicago. But um, for me, as long as Rick is, oh, uh, Claire Rose, one of our cosplay buddies is actually asking the question on Talking Dead right now, by the way. Um, I have it on in the background. I'm not actually listening, but I can see it. Anyway, um, as long as Rick isn't dead, dead. I don't want to see his head on a pike. I don't want to see him as a walker. I don't want him buried. I want him to just be missing. He could be missing for a couple of seasons even. I can, as long as he's not dead, dead, and there's the chance of him coming back. That would help me personally uh, as a fan. I don't know how you guys feel. Um, I'd rather him be MIA as opposed to just dead. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, there's just no way to satisfactorily kill off Rick Grimes and show the death. I mean, I, I just, I think that would just kind of like crush the spirits of the fandom. Um, I, I think, I think probably from like a marketing standpoint, they're going to have him disappear. And then the time from this point on when he's missing is going to be kind of like a trial run. And I think that if enough viewers still turn in, they'll keep doing seasons until they want to end the show, at which point then they'll have a reason to bring him back for the last couple episodes of the entire show. Yeah, and he'll like work out. He'll I come think probably season ten will be the last season. Yeah, it, it'll probably he'll probably come like he'll come in guns a blazing, riding on a horse or something, and then everybody like, oh, it's Rick. Um. <laughs> <laughs> or something. He'll have like a really cool badass entrance. Um, but I think I would have been more okay with Rick dying before the shows. Even I always wanted to show the end on him, but I think I would have been more okay about it had they not killed Carl. But since Carl is gone, I really don't I don't want to, like I can't lose him too. That would just be too much. So Yeah, it kind of makes it like it sort of makes it seem as though the story is not the story that you tuned into in the first place, right? And I mean, like, the whole point of the story was it's Rick's story. And if Rick were to die, the continuation has to be his offspring. And, like, Judith doesn't count because she's a fucking baby. And Carl's dead. And none of the other characters are people who are in the first episode of the show. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like Rick, Rick and Morgan are the only two people uh, at this point in the entire universe who are the surviving members since episode one. Well, well, the only other person who was in episode one was Shane. Like Carl wasn't even there, or you know, or Lori. They were they none of those An interesting people. Interesting question too, is the, is the, how is that going to be worked in? Because we know that she did, uh, that John Berthold's on set at some point this season, which means it's a flashback. <laughs> Either a flashback or a dream. Yeah, which or... kind of worries me, honestly, because I don't see, like, how a flashback on Rick's behalf of, of Shane would come about unless Rick is dying. Well, that's why it could be a dream of some kind, maybe even, which would be preferable, preferable to me. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how he's going to, I don't know how that's going to come about. Um, Karen uh, says that she thinks he may get hurt and the helicopter comes to get him to take him out to the Commonwealth community, uh, which is where that, uh, that Meryl, lady. that Meryl Streep lady, yeah, that's where she's from, right? Commonwealth, or is that un, is, or is that unclear? The Commonwealth is a is yeah, a comic book version. I don't know what the name is like in the show. I don't even know if they actually have a name. Do they have a name? Does anybody know? Well, at any rate, I think that uh, as long as he's taken somewhere that he can come back from. 
I, yeah. I really would appreciate him not being dead dead or I, I would rather him be gone than dead missing than dead anything but dead including walking dead um rick is um i know a lot of people think that michonne is my favorite but rick grimes is what got me invested in this show um it started with his story and i know it's a lot of other characters and a lot of other stories going on but it was rick's story that enraptured me so in the first place so that's that's for me that's the heart of the show is him yeah and that's really like kind of the problem with if, like his his character not being on the show i mean part of the part of the thing that was so charming about the character is that it's like it's very relatable because he's you know before the apocalypse happens he's very much sort of like an average dude you know who has like a day job and he doesn't strike you as somebody who would be, he, he's not like exceptional in like the theatrical sense. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of a, the whole story is sort of about like an everyday guy rising up under extreme circumstances to be a leader and a hero. Like that's really what The Walking Dead is about. It's about like totally ordinary people who are not exceptional at all rising up and doing exceptional things in you know response to adversity and without that element there it's it's sort of like the i don't know i feel like a a part of i feel like the point of the show is kind of dead it's not there to lead for you know yeah so we're just gonna have to see what happens also, um, and I know this probably won't happen, but I would love, like, there's, I've, I've always wanted to show, like, as someone who writes fan fiction, there's so many different avenues and, and different ways that something could go, different alternate universes and whatnot. I'd love to see a, like, a, a short film or something in a world, you know, where maybe the dead didn't rise, like just a total drama film. I'm, I'm describing a fan fiction that I wrote, by the way, because I have a problem. But my point is that I'd love to see, you know, some of these characters interact under different circumstances and what that might look like, uh, only because I think that this universe is so rich and diverse and the acting itself is so rich and diverse that there's so many stories that one, one could tell. So I would love like a like you know just a one off sideways type verse thing. Uh, I think that would be, you know, that could be like their equivalent to like having a musical episode, except it's not a musical. It's you know one of those sliding doors or slash butterfly effect type things. Just just throwing it out there. It's an interesting thought. Oh yeah, I, I have I have a lot of things I wish could have happened or. Or, or whatnot with this show. Um, so that's that's just how my wacky brain works. But, um, the brain of a writer. Yes, the brain of a creative writer. That's that's how we roll. So, um, I'm gonna start the wind down a bit. Um, for anyone else who's you know listening and and hanging out. Uh, please take our poll if you're going to be at Atlanta Walk to Soccer anyway. Uh, we'd love to know if you guys would be interested in uh, us hosting an event. Uh, we're kicking that idea around. And uh, yeah. Is there anything else you want to add, Brandon? I think it's about it. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully things will go a bit more smoothly next time. And, um, and then the week after next, I will be back. In Cali with Mr. Orban Griggs, and we will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. Do I want to end? Yes.